Um, I know this looks like a black blanket, which part of it is, but also part of it is my dog. So I don't know how, but somehow my SD card <laughs> fully snapped in half, but I shoved both halves into the camera and it's recording. So DIY queen. I know that spooky season is over. If I wanted to make a video about a horror movie, I probably should have done it in October, but I am filming this on day... I don't know, it's been the election for so many days. I'm filming this on day three or day four of the election, which is spookier than Halloween at this point, so. But who knows, maybe by the time I edit this and get it up, we will know who the president is going to be. We probably won't. I'm looking for anyone out there who might agree with me because I feel so alone in this opinion. I don't, I like don't, I, I very strongly dislike Hereditary. Please don't kill me, <laughs> straight film boys. And before you all come for me, I would like to say, people watch movies for different reasons. So if you're someone who watches a movie for beautiful shots, cinematography, wonderful direction, I cannot fault this movie. Not at all. It's stunning. The shots are gorgeous. There's so much symmetry. It's a beautiful, beautifully done movie. However, <laughs> I, me, myself, judge movies based on the writing. You're gonna find out very quickly that a lot of my opinions on this hangs <laughs> on one scene and you're gonna be like, girl, you are so dumb. So if you haven't seen Hereditary, obviously spoilers. If you're someone who hasn't seen it because you don't like scary movies and you like always hear people talk about it but you're like, I'm too scared to watch it, I got you. You're not missing anything. Let's dive in, shall we? When I first saw Hereditary, my critique, my overall critique, was that I felt like the movie only made sense if you went into it with a deep understanding of satanic rituals and the readings of devil worshippers, which I, you know, I don't have. I don't have that. I don't know. I don't know who Payman is. I don't. And they just didn't make it clear enough to me the first time I watched it. So I went back and watched it again recently to see, okay, maybe now that I know what happens, that I understand it, I'll like it more. I liked it so much less, you guys. Feel free to hate me. I, I accept it with open arms because I know that this is, I'm the only person on the planet with this opinion. But you know what? Sometimes you gotta be brave. The film starts out at a funeral for the grandmother. Um, we see the mom, Annie, talking at the funeral. And then here's the most important part of the funeral scene. Remember this for later. Our little girl, our little demon child, Charlie, is eating a baked good. You know what? Oh, it's a Hershey bar. She's eating a Hershey bar and her dad comes up to her and says, There are nuts in there. No. And then her mom comes up to her and says, Does that have nuts? Because we don't have the epi they really want you to know that this girl is allergic to peanuts. It does annoy me that both parents said it, but that's not why this scene is important. The thing to remember here <laughs> is that neither of the parents gave Charlie the chocolate bar. <laughs> Charlie and the chocolate factory. Charlie had the chocolate bar on her own. Both parents asked her if it had peanuts in it. She said no to both of them. So the logical understanding here is that Charlie knows how to figure out if something has peanuts in it or not. She knows how to fend for herself and figure out a way around her allergy. Remember that for later. Okay, so the family, you know, they're going through the motions of grief. Charlie's at school and she sees this random woman watching her across the playground. Creepy as fuck. Alex Wolf is smoking in his room, texting a friend, and he gets a text that says, Holy shit, huge party tomorrow at Aaron's house, bring ya dick. Which, <laughs> where y'all are gonna be like, this girl is crazy. Why is she so hung up on this? But here's my thing. In a horror movie, 
or a fantasy or a sci-fi, anything that you have to suspend your belief for, I think it's so much more important for everything else to be believable. You know, if you want me to believe in spirits, if you want me to believe the devil's in here, I'm going to have to believe everything else. You know, it has to feel real, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? I don't think that makes sense. I say this all to say. The party scene. Hey, um, do you think I could maybe borrow one of the cars today? Why? Where are you going? Oh, just like a school barbecue thing. No drinking? We're not even old enough to get drinks if we wanted to. Well, that's a crock. I'm just asking if you're drinking. Well, I just answered no. You gonna take your sister? Uh... Does she want to go? Uh, have you asked her? Okay, so Alex Wolf said it's a school barbecue. Clearly his mom doesn't believe that. You know, it makes sense for her to say, take your sister with to the school barbecue. But she knows there's going to be drinking. When he said they're not old enough to get drinks, she said that's a crock. <laughs> a shit. So she clearly knows it's a party party. A bring your dick party. You know what I'm saying? Why does she make her son take his little sister? And I know, before you rush to the comments, doo -doo 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 -doo, I know for the purpose of this story, Charlie's death, oh, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen this movie, Charlie's about to die, like, very gruesomely. I know that her death had to be, like, just as much the mom's fault as it is the brother's fault, but there's so many other ways you could have written that, so it felt real. The second a mom says, <laughs> indicates that she knows there's going to be drinking at this party and tells her son to bring his little sister, I'm pulled out of the movie already. And this is just the, we ain't even at the party yet. You wait till we get to the party. This scene, all right, we get to the party and <laughs> it is a bring your dick kind of party, okay? We, we've got making out, we've got drinking, we've got smoking, we've got music, we've got dancing, we've got someone baking a homemade chocolate cake. Listen, I didn't really go to parties in high school, I didn't <laughs> get invited, but I have been to a, my fair share of parties in college, and um, when, when, when on earth have you ever been to a bring your dick kind of party? Where not only is there chocolate cake, it is being baked fresh, from scratch, in the kitchen, <laughs> during the party! Chopping the nuts up while the party's fully raging. You tell me a drunk girl who's throwing a party is like, let me chop some fucking walnuts? I don't know about that. Another thing that I'm just, I don't believe it, I don't believe it. If you believe it, you that's cool with you, I don't believe it. Oh, hi. How's the party? Why, you wanna know if you should come? Uh, yeah. What do you think? Either way. Hey, do you happen to smoke at all? I have really good weed. The other room has a bong. So Alex Wolf is trying to get his dick sucked because, I mean, he brought it. So he might as well. And he says to Charlie, look, they're giving out chocolate cake. Please, Charlie, I'm... Oh, shit, look. They're giving out chocolate cake. Not to everyone. Yes, to everyone. It's a party. Two seconds ago? Someone was chopping up nuts for the chocolate cake, and now they're giving it out. So what are you saying? That there was a cake already made to give out, and then they're like, oh, shit, we're almost out of cake. We gotta make another one during the party. I'm confused about was why you were just why the nuts were just being chopped and now all of a sudden the cake is there do we have like a cooking show kind of thing going on where like you put it in the oven and just magically pull it out or like what and now you may be saying becky it's a fucking cake why does it matter it matters to me <laughs> because the whole movie hinges on this goddamn chocolate cake this chocolate cake and this party scene are arguably the most important thing in the movie. The entire story hinges on this 
fucking chocolate cake that makes no sense to me. Okay, so Alex Wolf is an asshole. He goes to smoke. Charlie comes in. Shocker! She's having an allergic reaction to the cake. Charlie. <coughs> What's up? Are you okay? It's hard to breathe. What do you mean? I think my throat's getting bigger. Remember what we said earlier? The logical understanding here is that Charlie knows how to figure out if something has peanuts in it or not. How come all of a sudden this girl doesn't know how to ask if there's peanuts in something? Not only does she not ask if there's peanuts in it, the girl chopping nuts was right there. She was at the counter chopping those nuts. So how did Charlie not know there were peanuts in this cake? So Alex Wolf is like, God damn, I brought my dick but I'm not gonna get to use it. My sister is literally dying. It's okay, Charlotte, we're almost in the hospital, okay? She's struggling so hard to get air that she sticks her head out the window, which, I don't know why she thought that would work, but in retrospect, you know, when you're fucking dying, you might try anything. I would probably stick my head out the window too. And then we get the moment that the first time I saw this movie, <laughs> I literally was so taken aback because I was under the impression that this little girl was about to be the main character of the film. And then this happens. Alright, so Charlie's decapitated, and this is what I was talking about earlier with how her death was caused by both her mom making her go with to the party and Alex Wolf's character leaving her alone at the party. So they're equally responsible for her death, which again, I get that that was crucial for the story. However, why would a mother make her 12-year-old daughter go with to a party where she knows there's going to be drinking? Why would there be a homemade chocolate cake at a high school party with another cake being made while the party goes on? Why would a girl who we know is able to tell if something has peanuts in it or not, not be able to figure out that the cake has peanuts in it? That's all I got, but I mean, come on. It's like the movie loses me here. I'm not going to believe anything else that happens because that was dumb. And Tony Coletti is really going through it now. So she goes back to grief, grief group. Sorry to chase you down. Uh, uh, were you not coming in, or? I no, I just um, I forgot something. Oh, w would you like to come in with me, or we could even just have a coffee? Uh, I'm sorry, really. I um, I I can't. I, I really did forget something. My son died. Oh. My son and my grandson drowned four months ago. The little one was seven. So this woman appeals to, what is her name, Annie's, <laughs> um, to Annie's grief. She's like, I lost my son and my grandson. I know how you feel. She hooks her in. So Annie goes to this woman's house. Just like that. And we'll come back to this lady. You just remember her. And then we get to the scene that I cannot fault. The iconic I am your mother monologue. I am your mother! Acting masterclass right there. I can't fault that. That monologue is incredible. Alright, so now we're back with, with creepy bitch. What is her name? Joan. 
So Annie does this seance with Joan, sees that Joan is able to communicate with her lost son. If you are here with us, please just try and slide the glass. Louis, if you're here. Oh! <gasps> Hi, Louis. And is like, I need to do this with my daughter. She wakes up her whole family. She's like, all right, guys, light the candles, shut the windows. We're getting Charlie on the horn. I am not. Peter, Peter, listen. <coughs> Stop it. <coughs> there is no need to be scared. <coughs> this is your sister. <coughs> the true tea about why this movie frustrates me so much. It's so close to being like my favorite movie ever. All the pieces are there to be an incredible film. And then they're just not put together. And there's other pieces thrown in that don't make sense. Things we start to really see things unravel. <laughs> Annie finds a box of her mother's stuff and finds a doormat that is the same like design as the one outside of Joan's house so she basically pieces together that Joan and her mom knew each other and she's going through this book of stuff and she finds these books about devil worship I assume I really don't know <laughs> do know is what's highlighted here. King Paimon, god of mischief, sorry if I'm saying that wrong, Paimon, 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 please don't kill me. When successfully invoked, King Paimon will possess the most vulnerable host. Only when the ritual is complete will King Paimon be locked into his ordained host. Once locked in, a new ritual is required to unlock the possession. So that's, that's what we're told. That's all we get. Who the fuck is Payman? I don't know. He's the god of mischief, yeah, but what what is what um why do these people worship him? What does this have to do with the grandma? Who knows? The other thing that is crucial is it says that Payman has to possess a male body. So earlier in the movie we we get a comment about how the grandma always wished that Charlie was a boy. So basically, the grandma wished Charlie was a boy because Charlie was supposed to inhabit Payman. But because she's a girl and Payman has to inhabit a dude, Charlie had to die. Which I'm not fully clear on why Charlie had to die, and the Payman guy just couldn't possess Alex Wolf. Was Charlie still alive? Um, but don't worry, they don't explain that either. Annie goes up to the attic, and oh my god, it's her mother's dead body. How fun! Now here's another scene that... Um, I have to salute Alex Wolf because the acting in this is phenomenal. When he's doing his little like, <laughs> that was my audition for Ari Aster's next film. So Annie has realized that in order to really prevent this King Payman from possessing her son, they have to burn this journal. They just gotta burn the journal. So she tries to burn the journal and instead her husband just fucking <laughs> up into flames. <laughs> Now this ending of the movie, I will say, is pretty scary. When people say that the movie is like one of the scariest movies ever, um, I don't personally agree, but this, this ending is pretty scary. So we go through a bunch of crazy shit, he goes in the attic, there's so many lit candles, there's a ritual going on, who lit all these candles, did Payman light all the candles, who knows? But everything points him to this treehouse, this treehouse that Charlie would sleep in, he has to go to the treehouse. So he goes to the treehouse, and what he finds in there is what we are led to assume is the group, uh, the grandma's squad who worships Payman. Meet up Tuesday night to worship Payman. the 
other thing that I cannot fault this movie on. The music is fucking incredible. The music is stunning. It's so well done. See, I'm not a hater. There's a lot of things about this that I like. Mind you, at this point in the film, my first time watching it, and hell, even my second time, I was like, what the fuck is going on right now? It's still, all we've learned about Payman is that little highlighted blurb, and we know that the grandma was friends with Joan. And there is maybe a minute left. And then this happens. You are Payman. One of the eight kings of hell. We have looked to the northwest and called you in. We've corrected your first female body and give you now this healthy male host. We reject the Trinity and pray devoutly to you, great Payman. Give us your knowledge of all secret things Bring us honor, wealth, and good familiars. Bind all men to our will as we have bound ourselves for now and ever to yours. One of my biggest pet peeves in writing, whether it be a movie, a TV show, a book, is lazy exposition. You know what I'm talking about when, like, a character will come in and be like, Hi, Father. I've really been missing my brother lately, who died seven years ago. And it's like, you know, basically show-don't-tell kind of thing. What Hereditary does is the opposite of lazy exposition, in my opinion. It does lazy resolution. Because up until those last 30 seconds there, I'm still like, I don't know what the fuck is going on here. I really don't know what's happening. And then Joan comes up and says, let me explain the whole movie to you right now. Um, Payment is one of the eight kings of hell. He was supposed to possess Charlie, but she had to be a man, so now Charlie is inside Alex Wolf's body. Um, we all worship Payman, and the whole point of this movie was basically to get Payman into Alex Wolf's body. And then they say, Hail Payman, and it's over. So my thing with that is, you can't, you can't just, you can't just make people go, I don't know what the fuck is happening. And then say, don't worry, in the last 30 seconds, we're just going to spell it out for you. I'm going to compare this to another film. One of my favorite, I don't know if you would call it, some people probably wouldn't consider this horror, but one of my favorite, like, thrillers ever is Black Swan. And that is one of those movies where I genuinely did not know what was real and what wasn't real until the last second of the film. So kind of like this one, I didn't know what was going on until the end, but Natalie Portman didn't stand up and go, this is what happened in Black Swan. It's just like, show don't tell. Show don't tell. When, ha when has anyone ever taken a creative writing class and not learned that? But instead they spell out everything. Everything! You guys, I'm not a hater. I want you to know that. I am not a hater. I am an A24 whore. And I do enjoy Midsummer. okay? So I'm not a hater. Though I also have some issues with Midsummer. If you want a video on that, let me know. I don't know. Like I said earlier, I just think this movie frustrates me so much because... It's so close to being amazing. The elements of a perfect horror movie are there, and then it's like they're just thrown on the ground. So if this is your favorite movie, I'm so sorry if I pissed you off, uh, but you know what? Art is subjective. So uh, I just spent far too long talking about this film. I need to make sure that my SD card will even allow me to upload this video to my laptop because it is broken in half and hey maybe maybe the good lord payman doesn't want it so i'll see you guys next time please remember every time you go to a party always make sure that there's chocolate cake and never forget to bring your dick bye